Welcome back to Airborne Productions. Today is the third part of the expansion chamber build for our DT360 two-stroke wrap bike. So last time we welded up that 12 inch long section of pie cuts. This time we're going to work on the cones that expand and contract to get that two-stroke hanging right in the right power band. In order to do so, we are creating pie cuts using the cones. This is done the same way as the first pipe was in part two by cutting the piece at small angles and stacking them back to back in order to create a bend. Making these cuts would have been impossible without the bandsaw though. We approximated the final angle difference between the start and the end of the conic part of the expansion chamber to be about 100 degrees in our case. So we made 10 cuts at five degrees each. Since stacking each piece back to back will double the angle of the cut. Making each cut created a burr, so we quickly cleaned these up inside and out with a few different Harbor Freight sanding tools. When you stack the cones up as they were cut, it recreates the cone shape. But when you stack each piece 180 degrees opposed to the previous piece, it creates a curved shape, emulating the typical expansion chamber design. So basically I'm putting each one of these pieces on the anvil with the hammer or on the sander until I get rid of these gaps. Uh, I'm not gonna get rid of them completely, but I wanna cut these gaps down a little bit. After that, we're gonna tack this all together and see what we get. Here's some of the fit up issues that we're encountering. To remedy this, I'm going back and forth between the welder sander and the anvil. First one's tacked. The fit up on this was definitely a lot rougher than the other one. I have some gaps to fill, some holes to plug. That's okay. It's a good start. This material is only 40 thousandths thick, so I'm running my welder at about 35 amps anymore and I seem to blow through too easily. Okay, we're back at the shop another day. Uh, so the cones are looking pretty good starting to get those tacked up. We need the center sections, and those also need to be pie cut. So in order to make those, I first took some flat sheet metal, and I cut a couple strips out of it, and with those, I ground them down and carefully beat them around the horn of the anvil. Uh, I probably could have just done this by hand, just bending it, but this was a little more fun. I uh, carefully beat it into a uh, close to perfect circle, and those will be used in order to connect the expanding cone with the contracting cone. Back another day. Today we're gonna get a finish. Yesterday I got a lot more things tacked, spent a lot of time grinding just to get everything fit up perfectly. So today I'll finish tacking, get that done quickly, and then get on to welding. The cones are all tacked up into place. So I'm gonna carefully remove the exhaust uh, from the bike and then very carefully add some more tacks to give this thing some strength while I'm wrestling it around. So we got some close clearance here. We got some close clearance right here. And this fuel line is gonna have to get switched with this one. Um, it'll clear just fine, but she's tight. There's quite a few gaps on some spots. Um, that'll be fun to fill. It's really hard to fit this thing right into shape uh, and underneath where it needs to go, but time to get welding. Here are my first few little welds. I had a huge gap to fill here and it's pretty rough. Another decent gap here. So learn how to do that, struggling, but yeah, we'll get there. Okay, I've ran some welds on one side and then on the other side. A lot of these are stacked up pretty high. I'm running out of uh, my smaller filler, I'm running out of 16th inch filler. So I'm using 332nd filler on a lot of it, which is way too big for the size weld when I'm running about 35 amps. This is 40,000 material, but whatever, it's working.
And she is done. And here she is mounted on the bike. So a lot of these welds are pretty ugly. All of them aren't so bad. But really, fitment is everything. I understand why people say that. It is so important to have your pieces fitted up properly. Um, some of mine were higher or lower than others. Some of them, I mean, some of them I had an eighth inch gap. This is 40 thousandths material. So what happens next? Well, we're gonna take this and route it out using this one inch material, which will then turn into a silencer to keep the noise down a little bit. We'll move this electrical out of the way, move this old post there will be plenty of clearance. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to watch us add a muffler to this thing.